Hi there, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to this site. And the reason you bought this program is you have somebody in your life who has dyslexia, or maybe you suspect dyslexia, and you want to learn more. So it's possible that you are a teacher and you have students in your classroom who you, you think are dyslexic, or maybe you're a parent and you feel that your child is dyslexic, but no one has diagnosed it yet. Or maybe you are dyslexic yourself and you're an adult and you want to find out more about it and what support you can get. Well, I am here to help and during this video, what we're going to do is just give you an overview about what you'll be learning during the course. So I thought what I would do is I would start with a little bit of background and this screen says why I want to be dyslexic and throughout this whole dyslexia coaching course I want to really convey that dyslexia is a very positive thing to have. There is new research done every day to show what strengths people have with dyslexia. It is an ability, not a disability. I love to say that very fabulous people have dyslexia, and if you have it, congratulations. I think it's wonderful. And if your child or your students have it, it is a fabulous thing to have. So during each of my presentations, I'm going to be showing you some famous people who are dyslexic and talk about what the good things are about it. Um, the next thing we're going to do is go a little bit into my background. Um, um, my name is Heidi Nord, and I got my bachelor's at Davis in 1992 in communications, and I earned my California teaching credential in 1994. And when I first started teaching, I really wondered why it was that I couldn't teach some children how to read. I'll be totally honest with you. I started in a sixth grade classroom. It was in a low income school in Los Angeles. And I had anywhere, I had students ranging in reading levels from kindergarten all the way up to the eighth grade. And it amazed me that most of the kids had been to the same school what was the difference that made such varying levels of reading? Why could some read very easily and others it just was really hard? So in um, just a year after I started teaching, I went back to um, get my reading specialist credential and a master's degree. And always my focus was, why is it difficult for some students to learn how to read? And What's interesting is that at that time, even at that time, getting my reading specialist credential, not one word about dyslexia was said in either my reading specialist credential program or in my education program. So if you're a teacher out there and you don't know about dyslexia, it's okay. I was right there with you. I didn't know about dyslexia either. And that's one of the things I hope to change during this coaching course is to help teachers understand about dyslexia because there are many teachers who want to learn about it who never learned about it in their teaching credential programs. And um, so if you're a parent and you have teachers who are saying your child isn't dyslexic or they'll outgrow their reading um, difficulties, please make sure you research it yourself because Many teachers weren't trained about dyslexia, so many, many want to learn about it, but make sure you do your own self-learning. And if you're an adult who never got the correct services, just know that um, our educational system is a little bit, we're trying to catch up, but um, you got kind of lost in the cracks. And this program will help you understand what dyslexia is and how you can really strengthen yourself so you can be an absolutely fabulous person with dyslexia. So I have been a teacher. I have taught grades K through eight for the past 14 years. And I know the ins and outs of public education and how to teach people how to spell, read, and write. I started um, 
up until two and a half years ago, I was working full time in school districts and I started my private practice two and a half years ago. And so I've been working with dyslexic students specifically for 11 years because part of that time I actually was working with dyslexic students in the school district. So um, I have a lot of wealth and knowledge about this, but it has been learning through other dyslexia specialists. It wasn't, I didn't learn what I know through my college courses. I paid for private seminars to learn everything I know. So, and my, my hope through this program is that more people can have access to this information. So <clears throat> here's the next thing we'll do. Um, so I had always been a teacher. I've always been interested in reading and learning. And then I had my kids and this is where it gets personal. So I have a daughter named Emma. She's now 12 years old. This is a picture of her when she's seven. And um, throughout my presentations, I'm going to show you some contrasts between my two children to describe um, which one has a really strong block of language. And Emma spoke on time. Language came really easy to easily to her. She learned how to read very easily. I honestly didn't have to do anything. And but interesting enough, she was still taught phonics. And in the second grade, she was still taught to find the long A words in her textbooks in second grade. Emma has a really, really strong base in language. She actually didn't need to do that skill. So this is where I think we can see some differentiation in our teaching. My son, Nathan, on the other hand, spoke late. He was about three years old when he started putting sentences together and he made many reversals in his speech. And so he said, biscotti for spaghetti, hospital for hospital. And my very favorite one is when Barack Obama was running for the primaries. And he kept saying, mom, who do you think's going to win? Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton? And so th that is such a good example. Barack Obama instead of Barack Obama is a perfect example of where he put a different sound in his, that last name. Um, he had word retrieval issues, so sometimes he would say, um, um, or you know that whatchamacallit over there. But with intervention, because I picked up a lot of these warning signs really early on because I had already started taking private seminars, and at the age of three, I started working with him. He's now in the third grade, and he's at the top of his class. He's doing great. So that's why I feel so strongly that early intervention is very important we should be screening kids in kindergarten. It, you can pick it up that early, even earlier. On the flip side of that, it is never too late. So if you are listening to this and you're 40, 50, 60 years old, and you believe you have dyslexia, one of the things that the correct instruction can do for you is to create stronger neural pathways and to ward off um, things like Alzheimer's that's what we all need to do is to create new neural pathways. So it is never, ever too late, um, but early intervention is the best. So I said a little bit earlier that I want to say dyslexia is a really positive thing. Um, it is a wonderful ability to have. I do not like to call it a disability because there's actually such great things that come with it. So. Um, I want to say that there are famous people with dyslexia. And let's go ahead and look at a website I have here that shows some famous people with the gift of dyslexia. So on here, we have actors and entertainers, Harry Anderson, Orlando Bloom, Charlie Borman, Anyway, the list is huge. Wonderful people who are actors and entertainers have dyslexia. Another big category is inventors and scientists. So Anne Bancroft had dyslexia, Alexander Graham Bell, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, and, and sometime go to this website. It's 
dyslexia.com forward slash famous dot htm and you'll see some absolutely wonderful people that have dyslexia another group of people is artists designers and architects so leonardo da vinci ansel adams all of these people pablo picasso all had dyslexia people in the law and justice realm there's um, Aaron Brockovich, um, George Patton, um, who is a military hero, um, and then athletes, Muhammad Ali, Bruce Jenner, um, Greg Luganis, all had dyslexia, physicians and surgeons, um, Fred Epstein, um, Andrew Jackson, and entrepreneurs and business leader. And they actually think that... Um, 33% of entrepreneurs have dyslexia, and it's because if you have dyslexia, you are actually very, very creative. So what we want to do is tap into the creative abilities that you have if you are dyslexic. Anyway, this is a fabulous website to go to. Um, writers and journalists and um, Agatha Christie, I believe, is the number one selling author um, after Shakespeare, and she was dyslexic. It's just amazing. So make sure to go, go look at that website. It's fabulous. There have been many MRI scans done on people with dyslexia. It actually shows up in the brain. It is a proven thing that is there. It's also been shown through um, genetically, through DNA. It's in your actual DNA, and there are many people who have dyslexia. It is genetic. They have proven that. But one of the great things about being dyslexic is brain scans of dyslexic learners show a 10% larger right hemisphere than the average reader. And they think that's why um, if you're dyslexic, you're so, so brilliant and creative. Um, dyslexic people are often gifted in music, art, design, engineering, math, building, interpersonal skills, intrapersonal skills, communication, and they are very intuitive, which is why many people who are CEOs of companies are dyslexic. So just to follow up, dyslexia is a positive thing to have throughout this um, dyslexia coaching course. I'm going to be hitting on this a lot because I want people to feel great about it. It's a really, really good thing to have. Okay, so in module one, what we will be learning is about the pyramid of language learning. And I have built this pyramid because typically when we enter school in kindergarten, we start right in with phonics. And there are four layers under phonics of skills that you need to have before you can actually learn the phonics. And this is where we need to see our educational system going to is if you have a deficit in some of these areas, we need to make sure that you can learn um, all of the things you need to learn before you are taught phonics. So in module one, we will be learning about the pyramid of language learning. In module two, we will be learning about phonics versus phonemic awareness. And there is actually a very big difference between these two. Um, sometimes I hear people in general say, oh, we can't, we threw out phonics with whole reading. Um, we should have never thrown out phonics. We really need phonics. And it is true, we need phonics. That is very true. But we need something before phonics. We need the ability to have phonemic awareness. And we will learn why this is the strongest predictor of reading success in module two. Um, so in module two, we have phonemic awareness right beneath the phonics. And we will be learning about what sound links are. And I have called them sound links and we'll be learn learning how to link sounds and why that skill is so important to learning how to read and write. In module three, we will learn about co-contributing factors that come with dyslexia. We will learn about the we will learn about the warning signs of ADD and ADHD, 
And what are some conditions that come with dyslexia and ADD? And what else should you screen for if you do have ADD? That's module three. A bonus after module three that you will get is, in my opinion, learning should be fun, fun, fun. Many parents struggle with, have, with homework. So the bonus after module three is a video that will give you solutions to make homework easy and fun with your child. And if you're a teacher, to help give homework that will be easy and fun. Module four is all about dyslexia warning signs and symptoms. So it, I should have said in each of these modules, you will get PDF documents that go with each one because I want you to have a lot of resources um, to go along so that you can note take while I'm giving the course. But some of the dyslexia warning signs and symptoms, all of them will be discussed in module four. You will get a warning sign checklist to go through if you feel someone in your life has dyslexia. You will also get a, di a dyslexia screening tool, and this can be used um, with kindergartners, and it should be used with kindergartners. And you will also get a PDF dyslexia in-depth screening tool. So if you feel like someone has already you know, had a lot of the warning signs of dyslexia and they have not passed the first dyslexia screening tool, how can we figure out what components of dyslexia the student have? That's all in module four. In module five, you'll learn about the continuum of dyslexia. So um, just like many other conditions, the dyslexia runs along a continuum. So there's mild to moderate to severe to profound dyslexia, and we will learn how you can figure out um, where along the continuum you or the person you know is. It's very helpful. So module five is all about the continuum. And as well, how can you tell the severity of dyslexia? What is dysgraphia? And what technology will support dyslexic people? So part of this module is going through all of the technology support. There are fabulous things out there um, to help people who are dyslexia. Module six goes into solutions at last. So in this module, we will learn what programs are recommended to help with dyslexic people and um, programs that will strengthen skills necessary for the first thing I went through, which was the language pyramid. So um, just in conclusion, we will be going through all of the components of dyslexia. This course will have PDF documents that go along with it so you can take your notes and um, it should be a fabulous course. If you wanted to learn about dyslexia, this is for you. Maybe you're a teacher and you really wonder, like I did, why some people can't read. Or maybe you're a parent and you're wondering how you can support your child more. Or maybe you're an adult with dyslexia and you really want this course. So I really thank you um, for purchasing this course, I hope you will learn a lot. I know it's going to be a lot of fun. I think learning should be a lot of fun and I'm going to add a lot of graphics in for you, um, a lot of um, things so that you can really learn very well. And um, if you, when you're taking notes, if you can even just like highlight things or put stars by things you thought were important, that will really help solidify your learning because I really want to help you learn this easily. So thank you so much for coming. I really look forward to working with you and um, I hope you have a fantastic time during this dyslexia coaching program.